All right, so I tried to film an intro for the second part of this lacquered rosewood neck video because, quite frankly, this is going to be pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> it just is. It's going to be anticlimactic. All right, so hopefully you can see there that little ridge there. That's where I was missing lacquer, but the lacquer seems to have stuck to it. So all I've done is I, I, uh, all I did, I didn't sand anything. I'm sorry I didn't film it, but all I did was wipe, wipe the entire fingerboard down one more time with a little bit of naphtha and a tack cloth just to see if it was a contaminant that was causing me grief there. And it seems to have been because the lacquer immediately stuck to all those little areas that it hadn't been. So you can see there again under the light, it's very dimpled, but I need to sand all this down. And then I need to flatten that little bit there so that it doesn't look like a big ridge. And that's going to be a pretty boring video watching me sand this. So I'll film a little bit of the sanding just for the DIYers, just some of the finer points of how I'm going to attack this with sandpaper. And then we'll have hopefully a good look at it once it's a bit flat. So I suspect it's going to need another coat of clear, but the reason I'm standing out here is because it is so cold. It's so cold. You don't want to be doing finishing when it's this cold outside. It's snowing today. It's like minus 30. My garage is probably plus five. I think maybe I've got it in there. So it's really cold. You don't want to be doing lacquering and finishing work when it's really cold like this. This is really stupid to be doing it this way. But here's the deal. Uh, I, I, I take this out into the garage. I lacquer it real quick while it's out there. No, it's not an ideal condition to do this. It should be nice and warm. So I, I, I've shown this in previous videos, but I do heat up my lacquer. I warm it up in, in, a, in a warm bath of water. I leave it there for 15 or 20 minutes to make sure that the lacquer itself is pretty warm. The neck is going from inside where it's like 22 or 23 degrees inside here out into the garage for maybe a maximum of five minutes while the lacquer goes onto it. And no, that is not still not an ideal situation, but I'm making the best of my situation. I know this should be warm. So then it immediately comes inside to dry I leave it in here 15 10 15 20 minutes in between coats and you know try to make the best of it that way but no ideally you'd want to be doing this in a warm 80 degrees for for those of you who measure things that way or you know 20 25 inside mm -hmm. would be ideal and th that might have been what caused me a bit of grief who knows I don't think so I'm experimenting because I knew I knew that the cold stuff might cause me a little grief the fact that those aren't ideal conditions but I knew ultimately this would work out the cold wasn't going to be the thing that held up this 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 experiment so I decided to try it anyway and make the best of it anyway let's go have a look at how we're going to attack this thing Okay, I'm not exactly sure what the best way is to film this, because it's even hard for me to see. So, I don't know if this is going to come out on camera terribly well, but let's give it a shot. So, as with most stuff that I do, I'm always trying new little ways to kind of just use the stuff that I have at hand to accomplish what I'm after. So, I usually, it usually starts with a quick little look around my, my bench here to see what I've got to achieve the result that I want. And so, in this case, I want something sort of semi-rigid, but also soft and bendy enough. In fact, so, I want something semi-rigid, and this is just a bit of that eraser, like just a bit of white eraser, but I want it to be sort of a little bit soft. So, all I'm gonna do is start with a bit of 400 here. And what I want to do is I'm going to wet sand this. I'm going to soak this a bit. Now 400 might be a bit too aggressive, so but I'm prepared to deal with that. I'm prepared for this to be to go right down to the to the wood if I if that's what ends up happening. So I'm going to go real gentle and just keep quickly checking it. Yeah, that's going to go right down to the wood. Oh, well, maybe not. I just want to see if I can flatten out this little ridge that I created here when I was trying to fill this with lacquer. And again, I'm expecting to have to put another coat on the entire neck. So if I do go down to bare wood here, 
I'm not overly bothered by it, but it's not what I'm trying to do. And I'm fairly certain that's going to work out. Can I show that on camera? So I'm just trying to take away... I'm going to see if I can flatten the whole neck that way. Alright, so maybe what we'll do is we'll just back the camera up here. Okay, so I'm just going to keep at this thing here for the time being. Uh, I'll record a little bit of it and then we'll come back when it's mostly done. Oh, there we go. That's flattening out okay. You can see there where there are low spots. So let's see if I can get that one completely flat, because that was my most problematic fret on the fingerboard. Sweet! That's actually working out. We're getting there. We're getting there. That's going to need a bit of work and uh, definitely another coat of lacquer, but if I can flatten that out, I think I'm golden. Because it doesn't seem to be flaking off or doing anything weird. It seems to be reacting the way it should. This has been drying for about 3-4 days now. So, I'm just going to keep at it. We'll turn the camera off. You get where I'm going with this. And I'll come back and see if I can hopefully do this whole fingerboard. Alright, so let's bring you back here. I'm a few frets into it, maybe 10 minutes later. And, uh, it's turning out the way I want it to turn out. Now, I should warn you, I'm trying to give you a bit of a bird's eye view here of what I'm doing. And I don't know how well that's working out. Kind of got my hand through the tripod. Legs here. And I'm trying to just... So I've switched over to also... The reason I turned back on the camera is I switched over to just 1000 grit. Because, again, I don't want to go really hard, and I'm starting to feel like I'm going to just treat this first few coats as a sealer coat for the wood. Because I, I don't seem to be having a problem with it sticking, but I do have a lot of little pockets, and that's just because the wood wasn't grain-filled, and it wasn't sealed, and I didn't follow all the proper woodworking finishing techniques and all that kind of stuff. So I know how to get it there, but not only am I being lazy because it's cold to do all that stuff, but I know that I can fudge it this way. That's the thing. I know that I should be following other steps right now, but for the purpose of this experiment, I'm, I'm absolutely fudging my way through this because I know this will, I know this will eventually work. It's a bit more work, it's a bit more finishing work like this, just in terms of sanding and then a bit of a bit more waste of actual clear coat material. But I can I know I can fudge this to work. And that's kind of what I want. But if this was a really expensive neck, I'd be taking a lot more precaution and going through a lot more of the really finicky finishing steps. Okay? But for the time being. I'm pretty pleased with where we're at experiment-wise. Like you can see there some of the low spots, that's the shiny stuff. So I'm not going to sand too, 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 too much more. I want to get rid of most of this, and this might take another coat or two coats. Doesn't really matter, I'm not overly bothered about that, and that's what I'm talking about fudging this. I just have to build up the clear coat up to a point where it's level so I can get rid of all those little dimples and shiny spots and I'm, like I say, I'm fudging my way through that. But you can see there on the ones that are really, that haven't been touched with any sandpaper, they're like craters. So what I want to do is get rid of most of that right now. And even if I do end up back down at bare wood, it's okay, because then it'll mean most of those little pockets are filled. So I really could attack this quite hard with, say, 400 grit or, or even something a little harder and just use that lacquer as a, almost as a grain filler. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to see if I can get a few coats of this on there, a few light coats of this on there, build it up and level it, hopefully. All right, so let's keep at it. All right, so we've gotten our way a little ways down the fingerboard there. 
that first fret actually turned out really good, but I attacked it pretty hard. So I'm I'm hopeful that that's going to work out. But you can see all the all the high spots still. And the way I'm kind of attacking this, it's so hard to film the way I actually want to do this because I don't actually do this. I don't actually do any of this stuff with with it sat on the table like that. <laughs> that's that's all bullshit. That's all for camera. This is the way I actually do this stuff and it's hard to film the way I actually do this stuff. I like to get up close to it so I can see it. Especially something small and finicky like this. And this is the way I act. This is the way I actually am dealing with this. Now, I, I should also mention that I like to fold up and that's going to be hard to see, but I like to fold up a piece of this, like say if I'm using thousand grit, two, three, four times over itself, so it creates a little bit of a cushion so that there's less likelihood that my fingers um, are are sanding ridges into it, so that this is a bit, it's a bit stiffer and a bit more like a. Anyway, it, it just I find that it reduces the risk of me putting finger, like when you have to use your fingers that it reduces you putting those ridges. So if you just keep moving back and forth with this, it creates a little cushion that the whole thing rides on and it just makes it easier to use. So it's a bit straighter, a bit flatter, a bit truer. It's not ideal, but sometimes when you can't get something straight in there and you just need to use your hands, you just you need to be creative about what you're doing. And I find that just Rolling it over two, three, four, five times stiffens the paper up enough that it kind of glides nice and straight. And also it creates a nice cushion that you want when you're doing small stuff like this. So there we go. That's starting to come out not too bad. Anyway, I'm just going to keep at it here and bring you back when all this is done. All right, last few frets here. Tell you what, this is tedious. Tedious, but we're almost there. So, just keep folding over my little bit of sandpaper, just whatever works. It's nice and rigid, so it's running flat and true, kind of. And it makes it easy to use. And it's conforming nicely to the surface without the end of my fingertip digging into the fingerboard. It's just riding on a nice little cushion of folded over sandpaper. <laughs> I personally find that a really high grit sandpaper just gives me a bit more control over... I probably could have attacked this with something a little bit more aggressive than 1000 grit, but I find that I can go quite hard with 1000 grit and be less careful about trying to burn through. So it might take a little bit more effort to sand through, it might take a little longer, but I just find that I have more control and that I can go in and clean up little trouble areas pretty quickly. There we go. That's what I want. Alright, I think we're good. Bottom half of the fingerboard the bottom bottom half of the fingerboard turned out way better than the top half. It's way less full of ridges. Well, maybe I'll attack the top half a little bit more here because I'm kind of starting to feel like I should just treat this like a sealer coat and get this as absolutely fat, flat as possible to avoid having to waste too much more material lacquering this because it feels like it's going to work. So I'm going to see if I can get most of the really big dimples out of these top frets. <laughs> Oh, that's
that's a bit better, for sure. Okay, just a bit more sanding is all, just a bit more effort. I should also explain, I am by nature a very impatient person. If that's not painfully obvious to anybody watching my videos, I am definitely by nature a very impatient person. And that's a struggle for somebody like me. It makes lots of areas of your life very difficult. Because it's hard to fight against that instinct of being impatient. It's not like you can just switch that stuff off. But doing tedious work like this forces me to be patient. Having kids definitely forces you to, to be patient. So I'm learning. I'm learning to be patient. And I'm learning that you know, better results with, with anything, not just guitars, but certainly while we're looking at a, at a fingerboard that I'm trying to get a decent result with, you know, I, I'm beginning to believe that half of the key to this stuff is just being patient and taking the steps and getting through the stuff that you find tedious. Because I know, I know, believe me, folks, I know there are lots of people watching me lacquer this, cringing their little eyes out, thinking, you moron, why are you ignoring this step, that step? <laughs> you know why I'm ignoring those steps? I'll, I'll explain it really quickly. Because I know I can fudge through those steps. For this, for this particular result, for what I'm trying to achieve here, which is not a David Fletcher style, <laughs> you know, Ferrari of a neck. I, I just want to know if this is going to work. And I know enough about this process that I know which steps I can kind of fudge to get to the result that I want. So I'm definitely ignoring a lot of finishing, you know, proper finishing etiquette and I'm ignoring a lot of that stuff just so I can get to the end so I can get to the end result as quickly as I as I want here. And that's starting to go okay. Hey, yeah, buddy. Yeah. I know on camera it looks really ridgy, but in person here it's starting to come really flat. I'm pretty pleased with that. Here, yeah, let's have a look at these top few frets. They're starting to come really good. Right, and this is what I'm talking about. These are the sort of the some of the steps that I know I can fudge. I know I can flatten this down and eventually get myself a decent surface. But yeah, starting to come out okay. Not too shabby. A friend of mine used to say that when I was growing up. Not too shabby. Makes me think of him every time I say that. Anyway, yeah, a couple more frets I got to hit here a little harder, but that's coming okay. I can live with that. I'm fairly certain a second couple thick coats will will get us closer to what we want. All right, I'm gonna stop filming the sanding process here, and then we'll get a. I'm gonna clean this up. That's the other step I forgot to show in my last video. I definitely have to leave this in the video. So after I was finished all this work the last time, and now that I'm gonna relacquer it, I'm definitely cleaning the neck. I realize that I forgot to film that last time, but I'm certainly coming back in here with the naphtha. We're going to clean away all this residue really well because we don't want any of these contaminants left over for the, for the new lacquer to stick to. We want this surface to be as clean. Like there's some of these steps you cannot ignore, like a nice clean surface. It has to be clean or you're going to have problems with your lacquer. If you've got any sort of contaminant there, that shit will just, it'll be the death of your, your finishing projects. So, I run into that all the time. So I try very, very hard now after many failed attempts at Refinishing projects, this, that's the one really hard lesson I've learned, is you have to have a super clean surface for your material to stick to. So I go over it usually a couple of times. Usually give it a really good hard scrub down and just try and get into every little nook and cranny where you want material to stick. 
and give it a really good clean and then the final step after this of course is just wipe it with a tack cloth so that anything you're using from this sort of cloth any fibers that are stuck to the those won't be in there contaminating your your finish as well so this was super important and I'm super embarrassed that I left this out of my last video because this is if you don't do this if you skip this step you're hooped you're gonna end up with just utter junk so clean it follow definitely don't follow my advice I'm no finishing expert I'd watch uh, there's a really good guy in Australia mighty he's kinda did a play on mighty car mods I think it's mighty finishing or mighty painting mods or something anyway I've learned a lot of stuff from him so check out some if you're interested in this stuff check out some people doing real finishing work and follow their steps but for the purpose, purpose of this, this is not really a DIY how-to, this is more, is this going to work? And of course, if it works, then if you're into finishing stuff, go off and investigate how to do this properly. Because I'd love somebody, I'd love to see somebody do, do this properly. I know I'm doing this half-ass, I get that. But as I've said here a few times now, I just want to see if the end result is going to work. And I kind of feel like I know which steps I can fudge to get there. So, let's get another coat of lacquer on this thing, uh, now that it's clean, and we'll come back down and have a look at it. Alright, back out here in the semi-warm garage. <sighs> you know how sometimes you can overthink simple solutions to simple problems? There we go. <laughs> I went through all that rig the other day to hang this thing up, and all I had to do was just hang it there. Alright, I'm going to try and bring you in here for a little bit of a bird's eye view of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to risk getting clear coat on my camera. I don't want to, but uh, I feel like it's the only way I can actually show you what I'm going to do here. How I'm going to attack clearing this. Alright, so we're, I don't know, 10-15 minutes later. That's been warming up in a nice simple bath of warm water, which we can just let out and give that a good shake. It's nice and warm. And we'll bring that into the garage. Alright, I'm going to hold this with my left hand. Give this a good shake. And the reason I want to film this part is because... I'm going to go across, like this. Because I felt like I wasn't getting a lot of lacquer up close to the, the actual frets themselves. And you can see there, I think I've gone down to the wood. But that's alright. So here's hoping, fingers crossed, that the lacquer sticks to that. So this is good and warm. I'm going to do this while it's warm. I'm going to stop talking. All right, that's good enough for now. Let's go let it dry. All right, go straight into the house. Straight into our messy house, because we have messy kids that are just a nightmare to keep after but this is what we want yeah messy messy little kids but there we go let's get a light on that see how it looks Jesus those kids are messy I gotta clean up today yeah, that's part of my duty. I gotta clean shit like that up. I gotta make this house spick and span and clean it up before mommy and the kids get home. And that's just this morning. But anyway, let's have a look at this neck. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out. Sweet. Nice. Alright, so I'll let that dry for a bit. And then we'll get another couple of quick coats on her. I'll let that dry for 15 minutes. Let's go check out my trouble area. See if the lacquer's sticking to that. Because that's going to be the true test. Did I clean this up well enough? Yeah, I think we're good. Sweet. Yeah. Looks like we're good. Nice. Now, I didn't go up the sides of the fingerboard. Just yet, but I'm going to. 
I just wanted to see if it would stick to the, to the fingerboard this way, but it seems to be. Nice. And a lot of those ridges are gone now. Because even after the first few coats on the first time, there was lots of dimpling. But this is starting to come out nice and smooth. Sweet! That's what I want. Alright, so we see there a little dimple there. But that's alright. So I expect to have to put another couple, three coats on there. Flatten it one more time, and I might have to recoat it yet a third time after flattening it again. But who knows? Fingers crossed that this works out, but it looks like it's going to. That's awesome. I'm so aching to see what this is going to look like on a guitar. Somebody mentioned Rickenbacker. Of course Rickenbacker. <laughs> of course Rickenbacker. Yeah, they've been doing this for ages, right? And I think that looks great. I think the Rickenbackers look awesome. Oh, wait a second. Oh no, that's just the light. No, we're good. A few little ridges there I need to clean up. Still, but I think, I think for the purpose of this experiment, I'm proving to myself, even though if, even if this doesn't turn out looking perfectly, I'm proving to myself that this is possible. So that if I ever do this to an expensive neck, I'll take all the necessary precautions and really make sure that the surface is flat and really prep it well and do all that good stuff that you're supposed to do. But as a quick and dirty experiment, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I'm pretty pleased. Yeah, buddy. All right, I have to admit this is pretty funny. Being a slightly impatient person, as I've admitted, I, uh, I generally tend to come up with quick and dirty solutions for stuff. So want to heat up your lacquer? Well, at least in Canada, when I turn the tap to hot, that shit is scalding hot. In fact, it's fogging up my camera. Now, because my... There we go. Alright, let's clean off my camera. Can we see that again? Alright, there we go. So you can see there, scalding hot water from the tap, leave that for 10 or 15 minutes, off you go. Don't forget to clean the sink when you're done, so your wife doesn't get pissed off. Hmm. Well, I know there's lacquer stuck to that, but that's not encouraging. We're about 20 minutes later. Everywhere else is fine everywhere else. So I suspect whatever contaminant was in here is still in here and I might have to scrape that all the way back right to the wood to deal with that. But at the moment I'm gonna go and try and spray some lacquer on the sides. I can see that there's lacquer stuck to those areas so I don't know what's happening there, why it's not building up properly, but I'm going to give it one last quick go with the lacquer, and if that doesn't, if that turns out like that again, then I guess my next step is to scrape down those couple of areas, well, this entire fret. I'm going to do probably scrape down this entire fret, maybe this one, and everything else is fine. So it might just be these two frets that I need to scrape back all the lacquer, try and clean it really well, try and sand it down well. Maybe not ignore some of those really fine finishing steps. But yeah, let's go try just my last step here. Alright, so we're back out here in the garage. I'm shaking my lacquer as I talk, trying not to shake the camera. But it's really funny, out here in the garage everything looks really good. Like I can tell that the lacquer is stuck to those areas. It was really hard to film under that light, the really bright light, but oddly out here in the really shitty light, <laughs> you can actually tell that the locker is stuck to everywhere on the neck. So, I'm hopeful that with one final coat, I know there's a huge ridge there I'm going to have to sand off that second fret and a little bit of the third fret, but I'm hopeful that now I'm going to get a bit closer. So. One last attempt. Uh, 
That's enough for now. Back into the house. All right, what do we got happening here? What does it look like immediately after it's lacquered? Because I want this shit to dry flat. Sorry, pardon me. I want this to dry flat. So this is what it looks like immediately after I've put lacquer on it. Now I'm sorry for the lighting above it. I don't want to move the neck around too much, which is not why I'm not dragging it around to the house and to try and find better light. I want it to sit pretty well flat and dry for another 15 or 20 minutes before I touch it or do anything to it. Well, I'm not going to do anything to it, but I'm fairly certain I'm not doing any more lacquer. That was that was the last bit of lacquer attempt to try and save these two frets as they are. As I said not too long ago here in the video, if that comes up the way it's been coming up, I guess I'm just going to bite the bullet, scrape these two right back to the wood as cleanly and flatly as I possibly can, and then try and re-clear just those areas. So, it's an experiment. I expected not so good stuff to happen. I expected to have to deal with a few problems. But I don't think that this is... I don't think that these problems are due to how I'm doing this. I'm fairly certain that I was dealing with some sort of contaminant there and that the rest of the fingerboard isn't going to cause me any grief. Which is good. That's what I really wanted to know. Is, is this possible? And now that I know it's possible, if I were to do this, because this is the first time I've done it, if I were to do this again, I would be certain to make sure that I've prepped my surface as well as I possibly can. Get it as clean as possible, as flat as possible, fill the grain, do all that proper stuff, get a sealer coat on it, sand it all flat again, and then really do this properly. But for the purpose of this experiment on this cheap neck, this is this is proving to me all I want proven to me. Is is this possible? And yes, I think it is. Alright, for those of you who hung in there, we're probably 25 minutes into this video, but I'll save you the agony. It worked. It actually finally stuck. We're golden. That, like it's about, well no, it's more than 25 minutes later. It's, it's probably closer to 35 minutes or 40 minutes later. But it's dry to the touch. It seems to be going on pretty well. A lot less cratery, well, hardly cratery at all. It looks fabulous. So I'm going to let that dry two, three days. Hopefully we can get away with a light sanding. Because I'd love to polish it up. And see what it looks like, being the impatient guy that I am. But I am expecting, fingers crossed, that we don't. But I am expecting, or rather I was expecting, to have to flatten this and clear it again. <coughs> Just to get it totally flat and mirror flat and finishing and finished and looking well. But that's it. Looks good, hey? I mean, as far as experiments go, as far as quick and dirty experiments go and everything that I was fighting doing it and kind of doing it half-ass. I mean, yeah, buddy. This is what, this to me, this is what DIY and at home is about, man. Quick and dirty. What's good enough? What's going to work well enough to get to achieve the result that you want at home? What's going to give you professional looking results that's good enough? And certainly I know that I skipped a lot of important steps here getting to this point. I probably could have gotten to this point in a much more orderly fashion if I'd followed some some more proper di or some more proper finishing techniques. But you got to admit, for the half-ass way that I did this, the super DIY <laughs> attempt to get this to work, it turned out all right. I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm encouraged about the next step, which is going to be like I said to flatten all that. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, polish it up. 
And then I reckon we can get to flattening this neck and leveling it and putting in a new knot and then dealing with some more stuff on that headstock because I've made a bit of a mess there with a bit of overspray, but that's no big wheel. I can definitely clean that up. It's not my thing to get my knickers in a knot over. But yeah, and as for the back of the neck, for those of you wondering, I don't I didn't care at all about the overspray on the back of the neck. Because the truth is, and I did try to say this in another video, but I edited it out. I have plans for the back of the neck. I'm pulling that right down to the wood, and I'd love to do an oil finish. Just all over the entire back of the neck. So I already have an oil in mind that I want to try. And that's going to be the next interesting little bit of what I'm going to try with this neck. Because as far as necks go, I'm really kind of building, it turns as it turns out, I'm sort of building my ideal neck. Because I like the radius of this neck, I like the way it feels. So I'm adding my aesthetic touches to it, but this next part is definitely going to be um, useful. Useful. As far as finishing techniques go, this is going to be useful and it's certainly going to be less trouble. And the weather's not going to be a problem for me because I can do all of it inside. So that's all coming right back to bare wood, except for the little bits of rosewood there on the fingerboard. And then I'm going to finish that in something that's going to be smooth and slick and um, nice feeling to the touch. Because lacquered necks tend to get sticky, so I'd like that to be a nice smooth oil finish that doesn't stick to the palm of my hand. And I have just the thing for it. So. That'll be the next step on this, because I, I reckon we're almost there with this bit. So certainly I'll pull this out again and we'll have a look at where I got to with it, but as far as where we're at with this part of it, I think we're nearly done. But yeah, that's going to be interesting too. This is going to be super cool. Yeah, as it turns out, I'm sort of building my ideal neck here. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful. <laughs> 